So before we get started, I'm hoping you'll help me out with something and raise your hands if you think that busyness has affected any of the following in a negative way. Our health. <laughs> our friendships. Our work. Our families. Our minds. Our hearts. Okay. I'm going to ask you to raise them one more time if you think based on just that information that it's time for a change. Good. I'm going to circle back to how we can make that change, but I want to start by telling you a story about a typical morning for me. I could tell that light was flooding the room before I even opened my eyes. I stretched and smiled and thought about the day in front of me. I had no plans or obligations. The day was all mine. And I really thought about how I would embrace the light and the space and the time that I had created. After another long stretch, I woke up slowly, got out of bed, had a glass of water, brushed my teeth, and I sat down with my journal and I wrote down all of the thoughts and words that had collected from the day before, kind of like scar tissue in my brain. And writing them down helped me let go of everything that was busy in my mind. After that, I sat in meditation, and I went for a long walk in the sunshine. And this wasn't a calorie burning walk. I wasn't counting my steps. It was a joy walk. I was stopping to notice beautiful things, uh, appreciating new views. And once, when I was sure that no one was looking, I closed my eyes, looked up at the sun, felt the warmth on my face, and I said a prayer. I said, please, fill me with light and grace. Energize me. Love me. So what do you think about that? Do you think that sounds like a good morning? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. You guys are way nicer than I would have been if you had told me about a morning like that a few years ago when I was in the throes of my busy addiction. I would have shook my head, rolled my eyes, and thought, lady, get a job. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I... I would have acted like I was annoyed, but what I would have really been feeling is jealousy because I didn't have time for those easy mornings that I craved. Instead, I woke up, coffeeed up, rushed out the door, rushed my daughter to school, rushed to work, rushed home, and then woke up again to do it all over again. I complained about my busyness and I got completely high off it at the same time. I was a busy addict. I started to rethink my busy addiction when I was working for a fast-paced, high-stress publishing company in advertising sales. And I was driving my daughter home from school, and she was telling me about her day while I was checking my voicemail and returning calls. This is hard for me to admit out loud, still, but she was used to talking to me while I was doing other things. By the time we got home, pulled in the driveway, I watched her get out of the car with her backpack, and it struck me that I didn't remember the drive home. And I didn't remember any of our conversation. So not only had I risked our lives driving home as distracted as I was, but I had ignored my daughter. I stayed in the car a little while longer, and tears pulled in my eyes as I thought about all of those afternoon rides home, all of the missed moments, and just that lack of connection that I had put on us. Uh, I thought I was working so hard because the job demanded it, because life demanded it, and because there was always something more to do. The wise and wonderful author and vulnerability researcher, Brene Brown, said in a Washington Post inter interview, that what's expected of us and how well we can do it is beyond human scale. She said we work to numb out. I know I was working to numb out. The next morning I thought about how I had ignored my daughter in favor of my phone, and I vowed never to use my cell phone in the car again, ever. I decided that that would be the day that I started showing up all the way up for the people I love, and the day I unknowingly began my busy boycott. My clients didn't notice, 
my sales went up, and more importantly, my daughter came first, not just in my heart, but through my actions. So busyness didn't only come after my relationships, but it threatened my health as well. I, uh, I was used to doing it all, but doing it all was exhausting, and eventually my body said, enough. Uh, in the spring of 2006, during a very busy, stressful time in my life, I was training for the MS-150, a cycling event in uh, Salt Lake City, where I live, to raise funds for MS research, and I got sick. I had debilitating vertigo, fatigue, and other symptoms, and after a few months, I had missed the MS ride and was diagnosed with MS myself. Uh, there's no known cure or cause for MS, but I am sure that MS was my body's way of rejecting my lifestyle. My quest for more didn't resonate with my heart. And I've been taught this lesson over and over again, that when you live or work outside of your heart, there will always be a breakup, a breakdown, or both. And I've had both. Doing it all, doing more, working more, spending more, owning more, uh, it wore me down and literally broke my body. And I'm sure some of you have noticed signs of stress in your own bodies, whether it be headache, fatigue, a cold, or even more serious conditions. It wasn't until I put the connection together between stress, busyness, and health that I could begin to intentionally slow down and finally begin to heal. If health were more important than busyness for us, we would never sacrifice sleep in the name of doing more. And if connection and relationships were more important, there'd never be a cell phone at the dinner table. I read about a working mom who organized her time so ruthlessly that when she was heating something up in the microwave, instead of punching in one zero zero for one minute or two zero zero for two minutes, she would punch in one 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 for two 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 because she said keying in the same number three times took less time. <laughs> <laughs> when we focus on fitting it all in instead of making room for what we really love, we forget to create a meaningful life. And instead of enjoying the gift we have right in front of us every day, it seems we insist on cramming our days and lives full of all the things. And when we have to juggle everything, we can't enjoy anything. So I think it's time that we stop numbing out and that we stop comparing our self-worth to how busy we are. We have a bad habit of, at least I do, comparing how much I get done to who I am. I can remember many evenings coming home at the end of the day, my husband saying, how was your day? And I'd say, I did A, B, C, D. And if his list had E, F, and G, I'd quickly remember that I had forgotten a few things on my list so we could be even. When our to-do lists don't have enough check marks and our uh, inboxes are overflowing, we feel like we didn't contribute enough and therefore we aren't enough. So I vote for a new measurement system. I think we should measure more by how we treat people. Measure by how we engage in our life and our work. Let's measure more by what's in our hearts and less by what is on our list. So I promised I would come back to a solution for our busyness, our busy lives, because they're not going away on their own. And I'd like to suggest a busy boycott. If the word boycott scares you, and you don't think you have time or you're too busy for a revolution right now, I'd like to suggest that if you ever want time, your life full of everything you love, that this is the time to revolt. So I have three simple steps that everyone can incorporate in their own way. It will look different for everyone. Uh, so number one, let's stop talking about it. For all that is good and holy, can we please stop telling each other how busy we are? We do it in conversation, in email. How are you? I'm so busy. I'm good, I'm busy. We're always busy. Maybe if we can take the word out of our conversations, we can stop thinking about it all the time. 
and stop feeling that pressure to be just as busy as the person that's talking to us. Number two, do less. Instead of searching for more efficient ways to do it all, do less. Say no, make cuts. Protect the time that you need to grow, heal, and thrive in your own life. And stop comparing your lists and your love and your life. And number three is my personal favorite, linger more. Slow down and enjoy. A busy life says, hurry up, do more, you're falling behind. A slow one says, you can stop now. It's okay to be still and listen to your soul. There's no guilt in self-care, no shame in waking up slowly or in lingering. So linger and enjoy good food. Linger and enjoy wonderful conversation. Linger and notice beautiful views. Linger and fall in love. And then fall in love again. With more demands on our time, the advances in modern day technology, and our need to be seen and to contribute, the pressure is on to do more with less. But instead, I'd like to invite you to stage a busy boycott, join me, and be more with less. Thank you. Thank you.